Hey, I'm Josh from Vacuums RS and Sewing 2 in Arvada and Boulder, Colorado. And today I'm going to show you how to diagnose uh, another issue with rug doctors where they don't turn on. Um, in this case, I've already diagnosed this. It's, the, it's a power cord. Uh, it's actually super common for power cords to go bad on cleaning machines, whether they be vacuum cleaners or shampoos. The cords are moved around constantly and they break internally and they simply don't feed power to the machine. And as a result, the machine doesn't turn on. So on this machine, the cord end is a GFI, and the GFI actually comes apart, it's four screws. And you can pop that open, and the wire actually simply screws in inside that GFI, um, and you're able to remove the wire by removing those screws. I have tested this cord uh, over here, <clears throat> So on one end we have the plug, and on the other end in here is where the cords come in. If you trace the cord on your rug doctor, um, the handle comes apart easily, you just pop the screws on the back. If you trace the cord, you'll see it comes in here. You have a black, you have a white. The green is not relevant to this. The green is simply a ground. One of your, either your positive or your negative does not have continuity, power is not flowing through it. So I'm gonna use a multimeter, which I have tied in a knot. So I'm gonna use a multimeter to test the cord. Um, on my multimeter, that's the setting I use to test continuity. They're all a little different, but that's what I use. I'm gonna test, make sure that my multimeter is working right. And it is. On the one side, I'm gonna to touch the one side of this and I'm gonna find the cord on the other side. I can never remember which side goes to which. Um, it looks like white. Okay, I'm on white this side. So out here we see the white cord is coming into the back of the machine on the main power. And so I'm just gonna take the tip of the other end of my multimeter and push it up in there. And you can hear my multimeter is beeping, telling me I have continuity and that side of the cord is good. If I put, I'm gonna test the other side, which is the black side. I'll trace that cord right here. And you can see that cord is actually going into the breaker and I have some contact here I can make and right there I have no continuity you'll hear that my multimeter is not beeping so the black cord inside of this somewhere inside of this power cord the black cord is broken so I'm going to go ahead and replace this cord um, you can buy heavy duty just standard cord from all kinds of places um, you can also simply buy a good heavy duty high amperage extension cord from your hardware store and cut the ends off and use that so I'm gonna take this off, very simple. We got three screws. And I will remember my positive and negative where those went to. And if I don't remember, uh, I'll watch the video that, uh, <laughs> that we're making here. So I'll take that off. And then on the other hand, I have my white cord here. I'm gonna use pliers to pinch these crimps. If you look at these types of crimps, you can see that there's a, they're flattened. If you use simple pliers like this, you can kind of unflatten them. Oh boy, these are good ones. Mm, there we go. And they'll, they'll pop right off. Typically don't want to reuse these. Um, they're usually kind of crushed after you take them apart. So you typically don't want to reuse them. I'm gonna pull this off. You got a couple options here at home. Um, I have these connectors and so I'm just simply gonna replace this connector on the new cord but it is, um, it is acceptable to cut the wire off and then crimp uh, your new wire or, or wire nut the new wire to there. Uh, as long as you're doing that securely, uh, there's not really any problem with that. And finally, I have my ground wire right here, which I will, oh boy, those are good wire, wire nuts. So um, we have in the back, we, we have where the cord goes in, we have this little doohickey here um, that kind of secures the cord. If you have the right size pliers, you can squeeze it and it'll pop right out. And then you'll see it's on the cord. This top part will pop out and then you can pull that old failed cord. It's kind of kind of stuck in there, but it'll pull out. I may actually, I'm gonna cut it and rip it out the other way because it's it's got a bulge in there that's proving difficult to get past. 
wire cutters. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it and pull this off. Okay, so we've got our cord, it's a heavier gauge cord uh, with grounding. That is very important. Again, as I mentioned earlier, you're dealing with water and electricity here. And so let's get this repair done right. I'm gonna slice a little bit of my insulation off. I don't have a lot of cord there. So I'm gonna carefully, with a razor blade, slice some of the insulation off without slicing too far into it and slicing the insulation on the internal wires. Uh, let's see. I need quite a bit of wire here because I'm going all the way around. So I'm gonna see if I can kind of pull some more of this wiring out. There we go. Let's see if that'll, oh yeah, that's plenty right there. So I'll cut out this cloth wrap that is inside the cord. I'll shave off my external insulation here. Now's a good time to give a disclaimer. If you are not an authorized rug doctor repair center, this is a risky repair dealing with electricity on a unit which will have water in it. So if you are not comfortable with this, don't do it. And if you blow up your machine, your house, or yourself in the process, I am not liable. You have been forewarned. This is actually kind of a time consuming repair. So it's not a terrible idea to consider bringing this into a service center. Um, so I put the strain relief, the little clip back on here, ran these wires through it. Now I have this, I'm gonna press back down on here. Now you can do this with pliers if that's what you have, you know, if that's the tool that you have. There is a special tool for depressing these, which uh, is not on this tech bench because you know, nothing's ever on the bucket deck benches. So there is a special tool for installing these. Um, the one I have is Heiko branded. Heiko is the brand of a company that, that makes these type of strain reliefs, I believe. I don't know what the tool itself is called. I'm just fortunate enough to have them provided to me by my employer. Um, they have probably been in the company for 40 years. Um, but this is a special tool. And again, you can do this with pliers. Um, it's just a lot easier with this thing because what it does is it clips down and it, it presses that stuff together and allows you to fit that bugger right in there super easily. So again, you can do it with pliers, maybe with needle nose. I've done it that way many times. You'll kind of bugger it up a little bit. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but it can be done. So I'm gonna get these wires back in again. If we remember our, um, I actually don't remember. Okay, um, so my black wire went directly up here into the breaker. I'm gonna, feed that back up these wire lines here. The cool thing about these type of repairs is your wires kind of want to set back where they were to begin with. Oops, my red's gonna go under there. Um, so, I, you know, I always suggest take a picture of what you're doing before you do it. You can reference that later. But the cool thing, you know, if you're in a big hurry and you forget, on jobs like this, a lot of times you can figure out where those wires originally laid because everything wants to just kind of lay back in where it uh, where it was originally. So my breaker goes right there is where it sets. These wires sneak around underneath it. Let me get those puppies back in there. And then my, so my breaker sets right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and I've got this wire connector. I'm gonna attach that right about there. Got an idea about what kind of space I'm dealing with here. I'll cut that. Grab wired strippers. Strip that a little bit. That's good right there. And I gotta walk in front of you and grab my... Oh, 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 no I don't. Here's my crimps. Down there, and then go ahead and 
crimp that puppy on there. When I crimp these, I give them a little tug, just make sure I did it right. Looks good. And I'll rerun these wire up here. And then reconnect to my breaker right there. Okay. And then I have my ground wire, which is gonna go up here, green to green, that's easy. Cut that, strip it. And I would normally crimp this, but for the sake of our audience, um, these type of crimps, sometimes they're not available at hardware stores. So a lot of times we're gonna be using wire nuts, which is something maybe you already have, right? Um, so I'm gonna find a, a good, appropriately sized wire nut. And I like to be thorough. If I'm gonna use wire nuts, again, water, electricity, blah, blah, blah. You heard me say it a thousand times. So I'm gonna use a zip tie here. I'm gonna go ahead and twist those together. And then I'm gonna use a zip tie to hold the wires together and further secure them so that all of the, um, securing the wires together is not strictly done just by the wire knot, all right? They're held together securely. I'll put on the wire knot. And then cut off my zip tie. My electrical tape has wandered away, so I'll go grab some of that. Okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna actually tape the wire nut to the wire to keep the wire nut from potentially jiggling off. Now I've seen people do all kinds of crazy stuff with electrical tape. It is not meant as your primary insulator. It is meant for this, to hold your primary insulator on and keep it from falling off. I, again, I like to be thorough. I don't want, I mean, these handles get yanked around and I don't want wire nuts falling off inside the handle and having bare wires. So my final connection is up here. My white wire is gonna go into my blue wire. I'll measure it, put it up there. See how much space I need, that looks good. I will strip my white wire. I'm gonna zip tie those together as well. Twist those wires together, zip tie them. here. Cut off my excess zip tie, a little bit of electrical tape, so I feel good about the repair. Okay, a lot of electrical tape. I feel even better about the repair now. <laughs> Maybe I should learn to use electrical tape. There we go. So at this point, We've got everything wired up in here. I'm not gonna close the machine up. Now, again, uh, this is dangerous work. Don't do it if you're not comfortable with it. Don't blame me if you electrocute yourself. I'm leaving this open because I'm going to test the machine prior to closing everything up. So right now, this cord that I have here comes pre-molded with a three-prong cord on it, or three-prong plug, rather. Uh, I am gonna remove this plug and then reinstall the GFI. But for now, the plug's already on here. I'm gonna plug it in and see if it'll turn on um, with, the, uh, with the connections that I've made here. Just make sure I got everything right and nothing blows up. Turn the power switch on carefully. And I have power to the unit now. So I did something right. So next, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this end off right here. If you had purchased an extension cord, this is the position you're gonna be in. You're gonna have an end on it, just like that. Slice that puppy off. I'm gonna reference my original cord here a little bit to kind of get myself a, a, a kind of an eyeball idea of what I'm going for as far as what I want for cord length and that type of thing to fit nicely back into that GFI. So I'm gonna cut off my external insulation. A little bit here. And be careful there not to cut the insulation on the internal wires while you're doing this. Um, I love box cutters. I use them for my bench blades all the time. They cost 50 cents. When they start getting dull, you can just snip little pieces of them off. I lose them constantly, and every time I lose them, I only lose 50 cents. It's amazing. Maybe if they cost more than 50 cents, I'd be less inclined to lose them. 
So that's about, I got about the same length there. And I only need a little tiny bit of a snip of a, a strip off the end of these. Put this puppy in here. Little tiny bit, there's a little tiny bit. And I get my ground wire. get my there we go all right so i'm going to get these wires back in i'm going to go ahead and put my ground wire in first clamp that down a little bit and then i'm going to put black over there there we go that's good clamp that puppy down and get that live one on. Right. Down. There we go. Okay, and then I'll put the lid back on this. We'll fire it up again for a final test. With some luck, I did everything right. I certainly hope so, since I had the whole thing on video. All right, so plug it in, turn it on. All right, and that is cord replacement. All right, so this is the most difficult part. We're gonna put the clamshell back together. Uh, I've gotten all the wires ran where they need to be. These two switches I have loose that are gonna kind of hang out of the machine. I've actually put this handle bolt right in here backwards to hold this lever in place while we try to get this on. You'll see down here, these line up, but not perfectly. Um, I would suggest if this is your first time doing this to get some help, um, get an extra pair of hands. Uh, make sure it's someone that's very patient because you will probably be cussing at them because this is not a fun job. So I'm going to first attempt to line up this bolt right here. I'm going to hold it, hold it from popping out on me, but I'm going to try to get that bolt lined up uh, so that I could pop this through. start kind of clamping this down right here pressing it together right here I'm gonna depress that lever a little bit it'll give me a little bit more now here's the thing I gotta flip this over so that I can screw all this stuff together and this is where it can come in handy to have an extra pair of hands if you do not have an extra pair of hands I would not try this without an electric screwdriver I'm gonna put in a couple set screws to keep this from moving around on me. And I'm keeping this lever to press the entire time. Okay, now I should be good. I got two set screws here, one there, one there. It'll keep me from falling apart anyway. And now I can get the rest of these screws in. I have too much trouble. Kind of working a scatter pattern. Let's set down a little bit. All right, so now that we've got it all screwed together, these two switches that we left out, press those in, they'll snap right in. Leaving those out is great because it gave us a little bit more, it gave us a little bit more room to work with when we were getting everything in there. Remember that this bolt is actually, actually in backwards. We did that to hold this in place while we were putting the clamshell together. I'm gonna go ahead and push the bolt out and then I'm gonna go ahead and usually line it up, put it in the right way. 
and wiggle the handle around, it'll slip through there. There it goes. Verify I've got that. Yep, I do. And then on the other side of this, we have a nut. The nut fits right in there and you can just kind of hold it with your finger and then screw this. Okay, verifier lock in good. Yeah, okay. All right, now we're gonna test fire it. Hopefully it doesn't blow up. <laughs> Amazing, first try. All right, well, like and follow all that stuff people say on YouTube. If you appreciated this video and it helped you, it would help us and our small business. If you like and follow us, YouTube loves that stuff. It lets, us, uh, lets them know we're doing good things. Um, and if you need any parts, check the description of the video. We'll link a few common parts that you might need, including the pump on these.